Hi, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton, and today we're going to be talking about finishing. Um, for those of you who contributed to the contest with no prizes, um, you're probably thinking this is, should be about etching. Well, we, I started thinking about it, and I think it's going to be so much information that it probably is not going to work in a YouTube video, so we're going to do that as a, um, a full video soon. Um, so, and the Chasing a Repose will be our next one after this. So today we're going to cover how to finish your jewelry. And I'm going to get dressed. Well, not dressed. Fixed. <laughs> not neutered. Fixed. Okay, I'm fixed. Hair up. Goggles. On the standby here is our little mask. Particulate mask. Um, this is using the um, buffing motor that we're gonna, I'm going to be demoing for you first is really very dangerous. It's dangerous in a couple ways. The dust that comes off of it, a lot of the compounds that are used for buffing are not good for you. Um, and I, well actually not ideally, you should have ventilation. Um, in this case I can't because I have to film for you, but I have a little box I made I will show you. Um, they also sell them, but you can make your own with plexiglass and, or acrylic and glue. So be creative. Um, another thing you might want to consider is protection for your fingers because stuff gets hot. These are these attractive little finger doodads. I'm sure they have a name. Maybe finger cots? I don't know. And these are leather with some kind of stretchy in there. Ugly. And then there's this stuff. This is, uh, they're calling it 3M Vet Wrap Bandaging Tape. And it's really cool. It's like self-sticking and you just cut some some of it. Oh, let's see that. Scissors are stuck on the magnet. You just cut off a little piece and just wrap it around your finger and it sticks. So you can put cover a couple fingers with this stuff and they come in like rolls of uh, 10 rolls in a bag or something. So that's another way to protect your fingers. Um, what I do with my polishing motor is um, it's portable so that I can put newspaper underneath it and what this will do is catch all the the goop that comes off from the buffing process. Um, another one more little terror item here on it is um, I don't know if you guys know how dangerous copper is. Um, the powder from copper and copper salts um, are used as fungicides and pesticides um, so if you're venting copper dust out in your yard, you could be potentially hurting the water system or something out there. So you really should have some kind of containment system, either a self-contained sucky system, for lack of a professional word, or make one of these little boxes to contain the dust and then take this and throw it out. So um, that's the fear factor part. And I'm going to get set up uh, to show you a couple of these wheels and how they work. So there's basically four different types of um, wheel that you use with um, a compound, like rouge. Um, I don't have muslin, but there's muslin. This is cotton. This is flannel. And this is felt. And, um, they come in, dip, like the, the, see if I can try not to mess this up. The flannel um, comes in different fluffinesses or hardnesses I guess and the more stitching it is, there is the the tighter it is and it's a little less fluffy I guess you could say. The felt ones you would use for flat surfaces. Um, this would be used for something that has a lot of intricate detail like like if I wanted to go in and polish on the inside of this piece um, I would use one of these two or three, the imaginary one over here, one of these three for something like this, whereas if I was just doing some finishing on this, I would use the felt wheel. Um, they um, are loaded with um, things like this. This is called Luxie Superfine, and this is alum oxide and used for polishing precious metals. Um, what you usually start with is something like this. This is a really abrasive compound called Brown Tripoli, and it it's you can use it in place of sanding. It it takes off scratches and um, really cleans the metal up. This is very aggressive. And the next one up will be White Diamond, uh, which is a 
less aggressive and then you would move on to something like hold on Zam as an intermediary um, compound and then finish with a rouge so I would use this for silver polishing and my final polish whereas I would use the rouge for copper um, brass and, and gold so there's like tons of different products out there and um, I found this really awesome uh, explanation and list chart of all the different kinds and what their uses are for on FD, FDJ tools and I'll put the link up here because it's it's an invaluable page it's called let me cheat here how to buff and I think you're really gonna find it useful I'd print out a copy and keep it in my studio if I were you so what I want to do briefly here is show you how to dress or fluff these wheels because you don't use them as is um, there are tools that are made specifically to fluff these tools this not tool this this wheel but you can use one of these suckers and I know you all have one of these at home or I would assume you have one at home so I'm going to show you how to do that real briefly and uh, by the way look down here and see this fabulous fabulous box I made Oh my god, I don't know what I was how I cut it, but it's a mess. <laughs> but you know what it does is with the newspaper here and the walls and the top and the sides, it traps 90% of the dust that I'm throwing off in the, the polishing process. So it's invaluable. Um, and it, I think it caught, I used both the um, mistakes from tap plastics. I think I get about a buck a sheet, so an hour or so. and some cheap plastic and I've got my safety zone so anyway I'm gonna get ready to dress the wheel which involves dressing me I shall return so one thing I forgot to mention about my polishing motor I put mine on a foot pedal so I I have infinite control um, some of them are just you know settings um, so you might think about getting an old sewing machine pedal or an extra Harbor Freight one or whatever so these things um, you don't really have to do much. You just put it on the end like this and turn the wheel on and it spins the wheel on. So this this will get tighter as I as I put pressure on it. It'll tighten down some. So what I'm going to do now is put my mask on. This thing when you're when you're doing cat fur again, when you're fluffing wheels, um, this puts off masses amounts of little foo foo things. So um, another good idea for this um, also really 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 important when you use these wheels you never want to put your object above halfway I generally work down about here what happens if you put it here it'll take you and it over to the side it's another good reason for the box here is to keep things from flying and killing your producer so um, use ugh, sorry cat fur is just driving me insane right now it's in my mask which I have on. Um, so use two hands. I'm leaning on this to ha have extra strength and I'm holding on. I'm not just kind of flaking out here. I'm going to move this back and forth. Now can you see some of the fluff that's coming off inside here? And this isn't even ready yet. So. That's probably good enough. So, why are we doing this? Well, the fluffier it is, the more pieces of fluff that we have, the deeper it'll go into um, recesses. Um, you want to just go ahead and trim off any loose stragglers and kind of make it a little more you know, orderly. This isn't too bad. Sometimes I've seen them out here. So. So this wheel is pretty ready to go. It's got a nice little fluff on it. A little fluff on it. It's almost as soft as my kitties. Probably get in my mouth any minute now. <laughs> so that's that. Um, another thing I wanted to show you, I'll oh, talk about too. Let me take this mask off. Oh, God. You don't mix compounds with buffs. So let's say, where's my... I lost one already, for God's sakes. Okay, this is my rouge buff. 
Here's my rouge. I even marked it rouge. I keep the buff in with the compound. You don't want to mix your compounds. What if you used, um, you know, a, a, something like the Triple E, which is real aggressive when you're trying to do a fine polish and you mix the two together, you're going to end up with scratches all over your work right, right when you're getting ready to do a final. So use separate buffs. Buy enough of them for whatever compounds you have. So I'm going to do a little Triple E demo. Um, on how aggressive this is in one second, okay? Can you see me? <laughs> um, one thing I want to mention about applying compounds to the wheels is that you don't want to put too much on there. It actually is less effective, so use a little more often. That's, that's the concept here. So I'm going to start putting the compound down at the area where we always work. I'm just going to put a little on there, and then I'm going to go in with my is there any on there? Maybe a little more might help. This is still too fluffy. This fluff will calm down after you start using the wheel. I usually the first time I had to put a little extra there. We finally got some on there. So I've um, mani manipulated. I've destroyed the surface of this. So we're going to see how this works on this one side. Uh, I'm falling off my stool. Pretty deep scratches. This one might actually need to be sanded first. We'll see. I may have gone overboard. See, I'm keeping it down here and I'm holding it with both hands. Actually, that is starting to take it off. This corner, whole corner up here was really messed up. See how nice and smooth it's getting? So then I would go on to the next step, which would be the Zam or the white diamond and um, then go on to one of your rouges, either the white or the red or the green, depending on what metal you're working with. So um, that's that on these guys. There's, you know, I could spend a lot more time on this, but I've got a lot of stuff to talk about in this video. Plus, I don't want you to fall asleep. God forbid! Okay, I'll be right back with you. So if you're um, buffing a little thing like a ring, don't forget you have, there is the the ring clamp here that can be used. It'll <clears throat> save your fingers from overheating or you can use the you know the blue crap that I talked about <laughs> earlier or the little leather finger things but this is a good way to do it. Two is <clears throat> come in here with let's say I'm going to put my polish on here, my final polish with the rouge and actually I should be using the white but I'm not. I've used the red rouge forever. I'm just starting to use the white for silver. So this is good to hold that way. I could do, see look how shiny and pretty. <laughs> um, so that's one way to hold something small like that. This is probably the most dangerous thing to polish. Um, chains can get wrapped around here and especially long ones and wreck you. Wreck, think about this wheel spinning with a chain on the end of it. Fortunately this box would help somewhat but there's part of it that's going to come out. So they make a thing called a, what the heck is it? Something gizmo. I have to get my cheat sheet here. The polishing gizmo which is basically a big dowel that's got a, got a kind of a groove <coughs> um, worn, uh, cut into it. Um, you can also use something like this. Um, this is a shorter bracelet chain so it's not a going to be hanging all over the place but you want to hold on really tight and you know do it as what you feel comfortable at what speed you feel comfortable on it so I'm just going to go in there and see how nice that got polished up um, the deal with chain is what I usually do is I put it into the tumbler with uh, stainless steel shot because it is less blind now. Don't step on my glasses because it's less dangerous and it achieves basically the same thing. Um, cleaning up on these compounds, most of them, I use hot soapy water with like Dawn because it's a really good grease cutter and there's tallow and fat and other exciting things in a lot of these products. Some of them are water soluble. Just read the package directions. So that's what you do. Toothbrush too with soapy water. Don't put it in your mouth. Okay, so I'm going to get ready to do the next thing and we'll talk in a second. 
So I've untangled my hair, ripped my glasses off and my mask because they were all tied up in the back of my head. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about other types of wheels. Honestly, there are like tons of these things out there. So you basically have to read what they say and determine what you need. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about deburring wheels. This is a, a, you can get really aggressive ones. This is not so aggressive. And I would, you can use this probably in the place of the uh, Tripoli. Um, they have some that are really good for taking off sprue lines, sprue cuts and seams in castings. Um, but this is a good de-scratcher, I guess we can call it. Um, 3M also makes these little green guys. Um, and this one is 1500 so it's more of a polished. They come in different grits also. They don't need any compounds on these wheels. Um, so that makes it nice. But the stuff that comes off of this, like I think this is silicon carbide, so it probably is silicon. You have to read the MSDS on these things because each one of them has their own set of joys that you need to worry about for yourself and the environment and your studio assistant. Meow. It's back there somewhere. So um, these are my favorite little guys. Um, I have these in the little mini ones, which I'll be... I think I've done a demo somewhere along the line on these, <clears throat> but I'll briefly show them to you again. They work similar to the um, the little fluffy uh, wheels we just worked with, um, and they can get into more recessed areas uh, and clean up and also polish. They come in all different grits, and they just stick on the end of the spindle. You know, same concept. Um, as the other. Make sure you put it going in the right direction because there is def it is definitely directional otherwise you'll wreck it. You want it to be spinning that way. Um, let's see what else did I want to say about these things. Um, I think I, <laughs> I think that's enough for now. So we're going to go on to um, matte finish, brush finish, high polish and using um, the little little finishing tools for uh, the flex shaft. So, um, oh my god, sorry. <laughs> there are nine trillion different kinds of little flex shaft buffing, grinding, polishing, finishing things, and I certainly can't cover all of them. Um, because I'm just not going to live that long. So what I'm going to show you is a few of the ones that I use and um, show you what they do um, very briefly because we still have a lot more stuff to cover. So I'm going to get dressed up in my fabulous protective gear and be right back to show you about the heatless wheels. Fun. One thing I forgot to mention about your safety gear fog. I can't see anything. Um, no, no loose sleeves, no dangling jewelry, and definitely not scarves, okay? Because wrap, wrap, strangle. <sighs> so um, this is a heatless wheel and it's used for a matte finish. And you just drag it over the teeth. And it makes this nice, actually I'd call that more brush myself, but it makes a really, can you see that finish on there? It makes a really nice uh, texture on here as a, in lieu of doing a high polish. Um, there are other doodads for um, doing different kinds of surfaces, which I'm going to go get right now. So there's these little satin, see how fast that was? Just like the blink of an eye. I switched wheels. Um, this is a satin finish wheel, and this one is an extra cut. Um, they come in medium, and I think another another finish. Um, same concept. It's you know use it your wheel. We'll do a side by side here to show you the comparison between the two. The heatless wheels here, and then this is the satin finish wheel, and it is a satin finish. Hope you can see that perfectly on there. Um, so that's another way of changing the finish. Um, high polish, we've pretty much talked about uh, obtaining that with um, the polishing motor. 
Um, I'm just going to briefly go through it with the um, flex shaft tools now too. So I'm going to do some more magic and switch tools. So I was going to change tools and then I thought, you know what, I need to talk briefly about um, some of this, some of the little doodads that are available um, for finishing. Um, these are, uh, what the heck are they? Aluminum oxide, I think. Aluminum oxide points and they come in different grits. They feel like you know, like scratchy stone and they feel less scratchy the finer they get. Um, th you can find them everywhere and they're great for like if you've got a funky area inside that you want to clean out. There's these fabulous um, polishing pins um, and um, Oh shoot. They come with a mandrel, which I was going to show you, but I don't want to run up again, run away again in the middle of the video. <laughs> so they, I don't use the, the mandrel. I just stick them into the flex shaft directly like this. And if they get out of shape, I just shape them, reshape them again on a file while this is spinning. Um, kind of like sharpening a pencil. Um, they come in a lot of different grits. I use these a lot for, in, like if I... You know, let's add a solder joint in here that, or a little piece of solder I could see. I can get in there with these little points and clean it out. They're really nice and you can actually polish a little um, bezel around the edges of bezels. It gives you a lot more control than, you know, if you're going to use something bigger like this. You know, there's more chance of you messing up and scratching your stones. So these pins are really awesome. Um, this is a little set of rubberized abrasives, which means that they mix an abrasive with a soft rubber. And they come in also different grits, too. This being more coarse, this is the coarsest, and then going down, I think the pink is the finest for polishing and they give you a nice pre-polish too. Um, it's just the same concept as sandpaper where you're, where you're taking a rough grit and then you're going down the steps to the finest grit or up depending on which way you look at it. So there's tons of them. I have pumice wheels here that you can use. It's the same concept. It's a matter of personal choice um, what type that you want to use. You can just stick with sandpaper. Um, 3M makes those killer um, I think they're called polishing papers which I really like but if you don't want to you know this is this is less hand work you know because you're using a tool um, I also see our sanding video for how to use this I think I've already said this <laughs> you know how senile I am right but this these little sanding discs I use constantly I, I hardly ever use these wheels honestly I, I'm, I'm a sanding girl these I use a lot too as you can see and this is the same um, as I talked about, but a lot smaller that was on the polishing motor, and I use these a lot for, especially when I'm working with something that's really, really highly detailed, and I want to get in and clean and polish things up in there. So, there's also inside ring stuff that I want to talk about briefly. These are, I think I mentioned these in another video. These are these little sanding drums. If you want to get the, the grits on these are still pretty rough even at the finest here um, that I've found anyway um, once oh, that's not them where are they here they are this is another 3M we love 3M this is the micro uh, finishing bands and they have a little rubberized mandrel inside here that you take on and off with a screwdriver um, this when you do this the wishes down and you can slide the bands on and off and these come in as you can see here a bunch of different grits um, so 222 what does this go up to, to 1200 so this is great for inside rings it's mostly what I use these round ones for um, and we also have these which are another rubberized a, a, a rubberized abrasive aggressive and down to fine um, with this the similar concept starting with rough and going down to smooth again um, as we have in the big wheel we also have muslin buffs felt I've got a whole bunch of fancy little things in here these suckers are cute these are little mini felt polishing pins that once again I do not use the mandra for and and you load these with your rouge or um, triple E or whatever you're going to do and they just go into your flex shaft like that 
Um, there's these little cutting, little shy fine edged discs here for polishing, let's say around the edge of a bezel or a setting. Um, and felt wheels just like on the uh, polishing motor. So this would be dressed similarly. And it has this cutest little screw thing. I'll show you it works. Because <laughs> I just get so excited about tools. That's why I have 6,000 kinds of different polishing things that I hardly ever use, but I had to try them. They looked cool. So flex shaft on slowly, put it in the hole. Done. Pretty easy, huh? I think there's my fork. Let's see how this works. I might hold my fork and fluff it up. Same exciting fuzz everywhere. <laughs> so um, this will be ready. And the same with the polishing motor buffs. You want to keep the buffs separate for only one specific type of polish. So you don't, or, or grinding agent, you don't want to mix them together. So um, I'm going to do a brief little finishing buffing thing just for the heck of it. And uh, I'll get set up and be back. So I'm just going to do a real brief um, buff up. Um, buff up. I don't know what it, that means. I'm going to polish <laughs> a little corner here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Parts of this metal are not totally trash, so I'm going to... I'm going in here with my 400 sanding disc, and I, honestly, all these other stuff, I'm still a believer in my little sanding disc. I, they're my favorite. I have all those other ones, and the, you know, a lot of them are spe special needs. Um, occasionally, you'll run into a situation where, you know, nothing quite works, so it's nice to have variety, but you don't have to, and especially if you're on a budget. So I just switched to... Um, God, I don't remember. What is this? Eight? Six or eight? I don't know. That's getting ready for pre-polish. And you can tell because it's pretty shiny. There will be little marks on there. That's just from the their micro scratches made by the sanding disc. I'm going into my little rouge because this is cop brass. And this is the right stuff to use for it. And the magic. I think I've done this a few times. Oh, stop it. So, I could probably get this a little shinier, but I'm not going to right now. But you get the idea, you know, it's the working through the grid and then using the ultra fine um, abrasives to completely burnish the metal down which is essentially, I think, what a lot of these do. Um, oh, God, get me out of this mask. Oh, I feel like I just came out from under the pool bottom or something. Another option for finishing is ye old burnisher. I'll find something to burnish on here. Um, there are, if you've got some, some, a, a lot of people use this with casting. If you've got some, um, Gugas from the casting you can they they make little burnishers that fit into your flex shaft that you can use to burnish over and fill in some scratches um i you know i've never used it so i can't talk about it. i don't do a lot of casting but when i'm if i want to highlight an edge on something and make it really cool and shiny the burnisher is great for that you know you just you don't need any chemicals or anything it's just force um, and you could use, you can make your own burnishers by polishing up like a broken drill bit, rounding it. Um, but you get a nice shiny edge on it. Um, you probably don't want to do this for the entire piece, you know what I mean. This is an agate burnisher, a curved one to get into little weirder spots over here. I don't know why this big handle on here. I don't know what the heck you do with that. Um, <laughs> So um, <clears throat> let me go backwards a minute. If you're working with the rouge and you want to do a quick check on how things are, alcohol um, on a towel or a rag, and just it'll clean up a lot of that black goobers that's on on there from the uh, buffing compound. So you can see how your how your polish is looking if there's still scratches in there or not. But you really should wash it with soap and water afterwards. 
you don't want to wear something that's been got chemicals all over it. Be nice to yourself and your customers. Okay, now let's move on. Um, <clears throat> Let's say like this ring, you've done a liver of sulfur, sulfur patina on it, liver of sulfur patina on it, but you want to show highlights on the tops without taking out your uh, patina in the background because you want that depth. So you're not going to use the bristles or the, you know, the felts because this is going to get in there and take all that out. Um, so what I use is uh, quadruple ot, um, <clears throat> felt steel wool. Um, you can also use a flat uh, felt buff for this process if you didn't want to have it. This gives it a tiny hair of a um, line to it. It's not an absolute mirror finish, but what it's going to do is just go over those highlights and keep the, the bottom part clear. I mean, bottom part filled with patina. Um, there's also, oh, these I love, I use all the time. These are uh, pro polished pads, and you can use them in lieu of the steel wool, and these don't mar at all. Um, they just remove the liver of sulfur or whatever other um, from the surface. So it's all they're also good to clean your jewelry if it starts to tarnish, like you have sterling jewelry. So um, those are two things you can use. There's also these sunshine polishing cloths. Um, there's like probably 600 different makers of this too. So, and this is an impregnated cloth that has um, some kind of stuff in it. <laughs> I'll have all the probably have all this on my website. My videos are a little more general. My websites are a little more detailed with facts. So. You can see it's picking up a lot of the tarnish on this piece here. So that's just a way to keep it clean or to polish it afterwards. Um, basically, you've done all the polishing work when you when you use the wheels and your abrasives to buff it up or whatever, however you finish it. So this is just for tarnish and uh, patina removal. Um, is there anything else? Oh, one last thing. I wanted to talk about this product. Um, it's made by Everbright and it's called Protect Protect-A-Clear and I did some tests with it um, and it held up really 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 well. Um, it's pretty thick, not like syrup or anything, but um, you coat it, you coat your piece with this and I would put on at least two coats of it um, and I use the foam brush. It comes with this weird thing. I don't know where it went. Oh there it is. It looks like one of those those pads your mom used when, you know, in the old days when they put on their makeup. Um, but this is a one use only, so why when you can just go with this little guy? Um, you need to find a method to keep, you know, like if you're doing a bead, maybe stick a wire through it and make a clothesline kind of thing to, so that the stuff doesn't, you know, you don't put it down and get stuck on the paper or anything, but I really like this product and like I've said before, I don't usually do that, uh, coat my copper and my brass with um, a protective coating, but honestly this has been the best I've found so far, so um, if you do want to preserve the copper and the brass from getting the aged patina on it, this, this is a good product. So. Um, I hope I've covered everything. Oh my god, there's a lot. And if I have, oh, the steel brush is another way to finish surfaces. I'm looking around trying to find everything I can think of because there's so many ways to finish, do finishing. Um, so I hope this helped and, and if you have any questions, you know where I am. And you can just write me letters or emails, they're called these days. Tell how old I am. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Ciao. This is Nancy L.T. Hamilton signing off.